Hey, good afternoon and welcome to today's presentation. My name is Jake Edler with Omnitron Systems. Also being joined today by my esteemed colleague Cliff Coolidge, who's our technical and application support specialist. Cliff, you there? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll be here to assist with any of your Q&A and for any questions with uh, regards to network design. Excellent. Yeah, so if anyone, uh, any of you folks have any questions at all, go ahead and use the Q&A function available in Zoom. You can type those into Cliff and he'll be answering those live as we go here. Uh, so got a lot planned on the agenda today, so we'll go ahead and dive right into this right now. I'm real excited to get this presentation going for you. This is a uh, part two of Omnitron's webinar series. Today's presentation is going to be about power over Ethernet, what's in your network, or watts in your network. Uh, we're going to have another one in two weeks from now about PoE extenders. Two more weeks from then, we'll do one on our CWDM technology as well. So if you haven't already registered for those upcoming webinars, please do so at that same website, omnitron-systems.com forward slash omnitron-webinars. With that all being said, we'll go ahead and get started. So today's agenda, power over Ethernet, what's in your network? So we'll do a quick introduction to Omnitron systems, and we're going to review all the basics of power over Ethernet and how this technology works. Also, we're going to review all the IEEE PoE standards, as well as how to choose the right PoE media converter, switch, or extender for the type of application that you're <coughs> currently doing. Also, we're going to review application examples along the way and show you some common application examples towards the end of the presentation. So a little bit about Omnitron systems. Omnitron is located, headquartered in Irvine, California, and we're a manufacturing company where we design, engineer, manufacture all of our own products. So everything is made in Irvine, California. We've been in business since 92, so celebrating 28 years in business. With that, all of our products are made in USA. They're TAA compliant. We also provide free 24-7 tech support for you. Um, and our products can be installed in commercial temperature environments, like 0 to 50 Celsius, all the way up to industrial temperature or harsh environments, negative 40 to 75 degrees Celsius. Most of our products also do come with a lifetime warranty, and all of our products are ROSE or WE certified. Uh, that are environmentally friendly, so if you're in another country that requires a ROSE or WE certification, you can uh, rest assured that Omnitron products have that. So what does Omnitron manufacture? Well, we make our media converters, copper to fiber or fiber to fiber, but we also have a line of media converters that have power over Ethernet functionality as well. Same with our PoE switches and PoE extenders, which we'll be focusing on today. And again, these can come in the commercial temperature range or also in an industrial temperature uh, operating temp. Omnitron also does make Ethernet switches as well as CWDM or DWDM multiplexers. And then we have our network interface devices and DMARC devices for telecom networks. Omnitron also supplies our own SFP transceivers or SFP plus or XFP transceivers for 10 gig speeds. So taking a quick look at Omnitron's family product development timeline, we started making AS400 products in the early 90s. And then as Ethernet technology has evolved, so have our products with it. More so on the PoE side, in 2010, we launched our first PoE media converter called the Omni Converter, and then we've been adding more PoE products to our portfolio since, with our Omni Converter RuggedNet PoE switches, as well as our RuggedNet and Omni Extender PoE extenders. Most recently, we launched a line of PoE switches that support the 802.3 BT standard for some higher power, higher wattage PoE applications, which I'll show you today. Taking another look at Omnitron's product family, these are the marketing names for each family. The My Converter and FlexPoint are unmanaged, cost-effective media converters. And then our iConverter, our flagship family here, that has the management capabilities incorporated into it. And then taking a look at the PoE side of, the, uh, of things, we have our Omni Converter and RuggedNet. So Omni Converters are great for enterprise applications, typically where AC power is available. And then our RuggedNet are going to be for the more industrial or outdoor applications, typically where the DC power is going to be available. And then as I mentioned, Omnitron also does support uh, or supply our own SFP transceivers. Our products do support third-party SFPs as well, or you can stick our SFPs into a third-party equipment that has an SFP port. The key thing is here is that our, our SFPs are MSA compliant, 
And so that's what you're going to look for when you're choosing an SFP transceiver to make sure it works with your equipment. So now we'll go ahead and review the basics of PoE and how this technology works. So what is PoE? PoE, or short for Power Over Ethernet, it's a standards-based technology for delivering data and power to remote devices over copper cabling, most likely a single copper cable. So this is going to use the standard Ethernet UTP cables like CAT5E or CAT6 cabling, and it's sending both that power and data over that same copper cable. So taking a look at a little diagram here showing our Omni Converter PoE Media Converter, and this is typically referred to as Power Sourcing Equipment, or PSE. And that's sending both data and power to an IP camera or a powered device, a PD. So these are common acronyms that you'll see out there in the market, the PD and the PSE, which we'll also use quite frequently today in the presentation. So as you can see, though, the power is being distributed as well as data to that camera, and then data is being sent back to the, the media converter. Uh, how does PoE work? So, Power over Ethernet, as I mentioned, it's a standards-based technology. So taking a closer look at this copper cable here, it's a standard RJ45 jack. And so it has eight copper conductors or four pairs within them. So within the IEEE standards, there's alternative A and alternative B. So alternative A, it's a detec detection and powering mode, really. And so it's described in the IEEE standard, and it's going to put the positive DC power on pins 1 and 2 of that connector, and as well as the negative DC power on pins 3 and 6. And so with fast Ethernet, these are also the data pairs being used to send all the data. But in the gigabit type um, data rates, all four pairs are used to send the data. Now, alternatively, on, on alternative B, it's using the positive DC on pins 4 and 5 and the negative DC power on pins 7 and 8. Now, before these standards were uh, ratified, many manufacturers used a non-standard based or a legacy type proprietary way of, of powering this type of equipment. And so this was actually implemented way before the IEEE standards. And so this, this mode or this proprietary non-standard based PoE uses pins 4 and 5 and 7 and 8, but the, the polarity is reversed on this. So Omni converters or Omnitron's PoE devices can actually support this, this non-standard legacy protocol out of the box with no need for additional external cables to do this crossing over of the polarity. So when you're talking about PoE, it's good to know the types of PoE devices out there that are, are powered by PoE. So commonly Omnitron, we're running into applications where customers are installing PoE cameras, Wi-Fi access points, or LED lighting, all powered by PoE. Same with the VoIP phones, some access control badge readers, routers, as well as clocks and messaging systems, digital signage as well. So these are all PoE powered devices here that our products are complementary to, will provide data and power to. So now we'll take a look at all the benefits of using power over Ethernet technology. The first one is cost savings. With PoE, there's no need to install power outlets out by that camera or that Wi-Fi access point that you're installing. So that can really save you a lot of time and money. Also, there's no need to hire a licensed electrician to do the, the install. It's very simple technology. You can just plug this right into that jack. You're going to also reduce your cabling costs by using power over Ethernet, sending all that data over a single cable. And you can use the existing CAT5 or CAT6 cable that's already installed in the building, not have to pull new cables. Also, safety is a great benefit of using PoE. So the technology itself is designed to protect equipment from electrical overload or surges, as well as underpowering, and it eliminates the, the human error involved in incorrect wiring when you're installing a, a device. Also, if there's any damage to a cable, say that cable gets frayed, or there's some critter that's chewing on that cable, all the power is stopped. So that's detected within the device so that's going to prevent sparking or fires within the network. Some more benefits of PoE is the flexibility. These things are super easy to install wherever there's no local power. So instead of having to, again, run an AC power or DC power conduit out to that device, you can use power over Ethernet to safely send that data and power 
to that device. And they're easily installed wherever there's an Ethernet cable already in your network. Simplicity, it's very easy to install the Ethernet, and also it's going to minimize all the cable clutter going on within your network. And then functionality. So these end devices can be reset remotely or do a power cycle to that device to reboot it, which is going to save you time and money from sending a technician out there to manually power down that device and reboot it. Also, with power over Ethernet, these devices can be backed up by an uninterruptible power supply or UPS to ensure that there's always power to the device. Now, one of the challenges that many folks uh, encounter when deploying PoE is really the limited distance, which is 100 meters of the bandwidth on that UTP cable. So with a, a power sourcing equipment, again, you can connect the device anywhere from 100 meters away from this power sourcing equipment. The real challenge comes into play when you're trying to connect a device beyond 100 meters. So that can be done by using fiber to extend that data well beyond the 100 meter limitation there with our PoE media converters and PoE switches. Or you can use copper to extend both the data and the power beyond 100 meters with some PoE extenders. So we'll go and show you how to do those. So how does a PoE media converter work? So all the data is being sent from a central location like a control room of a network all the way out to the edge of the building here where this camera is installed. So typically there's not going to be a power outlet here to power this device. That's where power over Ethernet will come into play. So all the data is being sent on this point-to-point -point fiber link out to a, a PoE media converter in this case. And then from there the PoE media converter is going to auto-detect and how much power to send up to this camera. And then from there it will provide both data and PoE or power over that same CAT5, CAT6 cable. So you really you made it easy to install this camera here without having to install additional electrical outlets nearby, and you're sending both data and power over this single cable. Next question up is how do power sourcing equipment know how many watts to send to de a device? So this is done through an auto detection or a handshake process. And so what happens is the power sourcing equipment that sends out a low, really low voltage uh, on this CAT5, CAT6 cable. And then if it's not a powered device, the PSE will not send any power and it will just pass Ethernet data only. However, if it is a powered device, that power device is going to send a command back to our power sourcing equipment saying, I need no more than 30 watts of power. And then from there, the, the power sourcing equipment knows exactly how much power to send and will send no more than 30 watts, and will continuously keep sending that power as well as data. Now talking about how to power some of our PoE power sourcing equipment. So this can be done through your standard AC, DC adapters. These are also available for US type outlets or international power options. So this is an external AC power adapter plugged into the back of the unit with a barrel connector. Omnitron also has PoE media converters, switches that can be powered by DC power. So you have a direct DC terminal on our device here. With the rugged net family, you can have either a single or a dual DC input so that you can have redundant power capabilities. The other way you can power a power sourcing equipment is with power over Ethernet itself. You can power our PoE extenders straight from a PoE switch or another PoE media converter or extender. So the power is being sent into port 1 here of the extender powering the device. Port 2 here can be used to send PoE out to that Wi-Fi access point or camera that you're trying to install. So there's no need for electrical wiring out here to power this device. You can locate this 100 meters away from another PoE source. So next topic, we'll review all the IEEE PoE standards. So the first IEEE PoE standard is called 802.3 AF. This was ratified in 2003, and what it does is it allows for up to 15.4 watts per connection or per port to be delivered to a powered device. And at, a, at the end of 100 meters, there should be 12.95 watts being assured to that device per the standard. So this was a great standard that came out as all these IP cameras and Wi-Fi access points were coming to market. But then as more power-hungry devices started coming to, to market, they needed more power all the way up to 30 watts. So the IEEE ratified 802.3 AT, PoE Plus, in 2009, 
which allows for up to 30 watts to be sent over the copper cabling and 25 and a half watts assured at the end of a 100 meter lot run. A good way to, to remember that PoE plus is AT. I always look at the, the T and the PoE plus just to, to say, all right, AT equals PoE plus or 30 watts. Then again, as more power hungry devices came to market, such as PTZ cameras with uh, heaters and defrosters or multi-stream wireless access points, the IEEE said, you know what, we need another standard here that's going to support high power PoE beyond 30 watts. And so what they did was they ratified 802.3 BT. So this is going to be for 60 to 100 watt high power PoE devices. It's going to allow up to 100 watts per port and have 71 watts assured at the end device at the end of 100 meters. So nice, these are the three PoE standards that you need to know about. Here's a look at them on a, on a chart, again, showing each standard, the amount of wattage, when it was ratified, and the number of pairs being used to deliver that power. You'll also hear about PoE types and classes as far as power devices. So you have a type one camera that's class two, you know you'll need about seven watts or six and a half watts at the end of that device to power that device. And so also being shown here is the different cabling types used for each standard, as well as the data rates that are incorporated in those standards from 10, 10 meg to gigabit as far as PoE plus goes. And then the BT standard allow for, for higher data rates as well, all the way up to 10 gig. Again, another great chart here. You can take a snapshot of this, hit print right now, uh, and then post this up on your desktop. Now we'll go into choosing the right PoE device based on your type of application. So Omnitron PoE power sourcing equipment. Omni converters are, are PoE media converters. They're going to have either one or two fiber ports and one or two uh, copper PoE ports. Omni converters also come in the switch, PoE switch form factors. We also have a, another family called Rugginet, as I mentioned. These are our industrial PoE switches. And Rugginet has a line called our industrial uh, PoE extenders as well. We also have one more family called the Omni extenders, and these are PoE extenders more for commercial type applications. But so just a matter on your application, how many ports you need, or the various levels of PoE, Om Omnitron has devices to support those needs. Let's get these in line here. And then here's another PoE standards reference chart. And what this is showing is all the PoE standards, the amount of wattage, and typical PoE powered devices out there and how much power they require. So some smart lighting uh, or digital signage, they may require some higher levels of PoE from 60 to 100 watt. And then on the, on the far right here, shows you the column of the Omnitron product family that's going to support this wattage. All the way down to the lower power devices such as IP cameras or, or fire alarm or access control, which you can power with any of our PoE families. So how to choose the right type of PoE power sourcing equipment for your network. This is a useful uh, list of questions here to really narrow down what you need. So the first question is going to be how much PoE is needed. So is it going to be PoE 15 watt, PoE plus 30 watt, or some high power PoE such as 60 up to 100 watt PoE power sourcing. Next up is where is this device going to be installed? So if it's going indoors, Standard temperature 0 to 50 Celsius is perfect. But if it's going outdoors, then again, or in some factory setting, you're going to probably want to get a, a power sourcing equipment that supports wide or industrial temp, such as negative 40 to 75 Celsius, which is 167 degrees Fahrenheit. Another thing to consider when you're choosing your power sourcing equipment is the number of fiber and copper ports you need, as well as the connector for the fiber, is it SFP, ST, SC, or a fixed LC connector? Another important factor is management. Do you need management or not? So management has some great advanced features, but unmanaged PoE power sourcing equipment comes uh, much more cost effective. Also the Ethernet data rate being used on your network. Is it 10, 100 megabits per second, or all the way up to 10, 100, 1,000, or 1 gig? And then the fiber type you're using, is it multi-mode, single mode, dual fiber, or single fiber? And with that, that comes along the fiber distance, anything up to 140 kilometers. Typically, these longer distances will be run over single mode fiber 
but it's important to know the exact distance you're running here as that will dictate the optic that's put into the power sourcing equipment device. Also the powering option. What type of power do you have available to power this PoE switch media converter or extender? Is it AC, DC, or are you just coming out of another PoE switch, in which case you could power a PoE extender? And then lastly, the mounting options. Where will this device be located? You can, again, tabletop mount these, uh, wall mount, rack mount, or DIN, DIN rail mounting. Here's a nice list of questions, and I, I recommend you take a screenshot of this. Um, so anytime you're trying to choose the right type of PoE device, you can go through these questions, or you can contact Omnitron. We'll help you out, figure out the type of PoE device that you need. So now we'll take a look at Omnitron's PoE products. First up is our Omni Converter PoE Media Converters. So these PoE Media Converters feature a fiber and copper port, and it's going to convert fiber to copper as well as inject PoE out of these copper ports. So with our Gigabit Media Converters, they can support all the various PoE levels all the way up to 100 watts, or fast Ethernet we can support up to PoE Plus or 30 watts. So just based on your application, we have different PoE media converters that will best fit those needs. So if it's just dropping off PoE power to a single device, you can get a one fiber, one copper port PoE media converter very cost effectively. But if you need to do some redundant fiber or daisy chaining, you can get the multiple fiber ports here and drop off PoE to multiple devices here. So again, just based on your application, there's a, a right PoE media converter for that application. Taking a closer look at the PoE media converters, as I mentioned, they can support up to 100 watts PoE per port. The nice thing about these is that they're backward compatible to support all the PoE standards. So you can hook up a 15 watt, a 30 watt, 60 watt, all the way up to a 100 watt device from each of these ports. You can also hook up a 15 watt on one port and a 100 watt on another port or a non-PoE powered device on this port as well. So it will auto negotiate how much power to send to that device again. As far as powering the Omni Converter Media Converters, it can be done through our AC to DC adapters here, or if you're just doing a straight DC input, the PoE is going to take 46 to 57 volts, PoE plus a little bit higher to get that higher wattage, meaning the 52 to 57 voltage range. Also, mounting options for the Omni Converters. As I mentioned, these can be tabletop mounted, wall mounted, or onto a, a rack mount shelf. So we have this part number 8260 right here. And with the Omni converters, as I'll show you here, they come with integrated wall mounting brackets. And so you can just pop the pop rivet would be right onto a shelf, or they come with the little rubber feet here too, if you're going to be putting it on a tabletop type device. You can also DIN rail Omni converter media converters with the DIN rail mounting bracket. And they fit nicely into these NEMA enclosures on a wall mount type situation here. And these will help, these outdoor enclosures will help protect the Omni converter from the elements, such as rain or wind. Also for, for Wi-Fi access point connectivity, here's an application showing our iConverter media converters doing some copper to fiber conversion in a central office and running fiber to various buildings within a network. So very, uh, a lot of smart cities are using these to drop off connectivity to their public libraries, police department, fire department, and then you can daisy chain from one building to the next with fiber, convert it over to PoE to power these Wi-Fi access points. Or you can get the, the single fiber port, single copper port here if you're doing a point-to-point -point fiber and just need to drop off PoE to one of these devices. So again, the great thing about Omni converters, what our customers really love about them is that they're very small, compact, they fit in the palm of your hand, and they can be temperature hardened for outdoor deployments. Another nice feature with Omni Converter PoE Media Converters is the ability to power cycle a device. And that's done with the, the ability to sense the, the fiber loss uh, on that signal. So very typically out there on the, on the market, these cameras or Wi-Fi devices can just get hung up or freeze up. And so in the past, they would have to send a technician out there to manually reboot or repower cycle that equipment. So you can really save a lot of time and money by doing that remotely. And I'll show you how that's done. So when that PD, that powered device gets frozen up, you can disable the fiber 
either by unplugging the fiber port at the switch or at the media converter, or if you're using a managed switcher, you can just disable that fiber port through management. The power is then turned off for two seconds coming out of the PoE ports, which allows that PD device to restart. So it's a nice way of, of doing a power cycle with an unmanaged media converter, saving you a lot of time and money by not having to send that technician to crawl up in the rafters and come face to face with the Black Widow uh, in order to reset power to that device. Now we'll go ahead and take a look at the Omni converters, our managed and unmanaged PoE switches. So Omni converters can also come in the switch form factor, great for enterprise applications. They're going to support PoE levels all the way up to 100 watts on our four port device, which is 802.3BT compliant, or up to eight ports with 30 watts or PoE plus on eight of these ports. They can also come with either one or two fiber or copper uplink ports, as well as management or unmanaged. And these can be powered by AC or DC. Uh, the thing to keep in mind with our DC power is, is the Omni converter switches just have a single DC power input. So if you do need dual power inputs for DC, that's when you would go to the Ruggedet family. But as far as uh, mounting options go for the Omni converters, again, these can be tabletop mounted. These can be wall mounted with the integrated mounting brackets, which you see here. Or they can be DIN rail clipped onto a DIN rail, or you can use that same shelf, part number 8260-0, and again, mount up to two of these Omni converter switches on this shelf here for rack mounting. So these shelves have a pre-drilled hole pattern here, so just depending on the size of the Omnitron device, you can fit different devices on the same shelf and just top rivet them right onto the shelf. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of these PoE switches in a smart building or building automation system type application. Again, where you have a central office or head office here at the, at the ground floor, sending fiber out to various PoE powered devices within a smart building. So showing our my converter chassis actually, running fiber out to some Omni converter PoE media converters that they only need to drop off PoE power to two devices here, the access control at the edge of the building and the messaging system out in the parking lot. And as you run fiber up to the building, again, you can drop off to some Wi-Fi or HVAC controls, or use this Omni Converter PoE switch here with more ports in order to hook up to more devices, such as Wi-Fi access points or LED lighting or more PoE-powered cameras. Now we'll go ahead and take a look at the RuggedNet PoE family. And so, as the name implies, RuggedNet is more ruggedized, temperature-hardened for more industrial markets or outdoor applications. These also support all the same PoE power levels as our Omni converter switches, which I just showed you, all the way up to 100 watts. But they have this industrial temperature rating, negative 40 to 75. So these uh, rugged nets come with a DIN rail mount included on the device, and we also have wall mounting options available. So again, a rugged net will support up to 100 watts per port on the copper ports, or up to 30 watts PoE plus on these eight PoE ports. Another thing to keep in mind, too, is that these do support 100 watts per port. So some of uh, the competition out there may advertise that it's got a 100 watt PoE switch, but that might be 100 watts shared between all of these ports or just 100 watts on one of the ports. So it's always great to know what that, uh, that switch is really capable of, of providing power when you're talking about is it shared power or is it per port. It also can come with either the one or two fiber ports, managed or unmanaged, as well as DC power with that single or the dual DC input here. There's also some alarm contacts on the top of a rugged net device here that you can really link up to and send alarms. So if someone's tampering with that enclosure, if that door opens, send an alarm to the network manager showing them exactly when and where that, that um, took place. As far as mounting options, as I mentioned, the rugged net comes with this DIN rail mounting uh, clip in included with the product, or you can get the part number 8260-3 is the wall mounting plate here, so you can do some wall mounts or put these onto one of our rack mount shelves. So Regonet are great products for these outdoor surveillance and Wi-Fi applications. So anytime there's a long linear fiber run, like such as an oil pipeline, where they need to get communication out here for sensors and for video cameras, uh, and you're doing daisy chain type applications over long haul fiber. Same with perimeter security, or if you're running fiber out to historic sites, 
need to do some surveillance out there. That's where the rugged net really thrives is in these environments. And then also in sporting arenas, um, where you're getting a large amount of people congregating together and just sucking up bandwidth and you need more security, rugged net will be perfect for that. Also transportation, so subways, trains, also the airports. Uh, we have many applications where they'll run rugged nets out on the tarmac and run fiber out there for surveillance as well. Now we'll take a look at some of the advanced features available with the Omni Converter and rugged net switches. The first one is called dual device mode. So this is a great feature for saving you a lot of space in your network. Instead of having two PoE switches in one location, you can have two PoE switches in one device. So that's just done by either through the management or by flipping a dip switch on the side of the product here. It will set the rugged net or Omni Converter switch into dual device mode. So now you have fiber port one here controlling the top four copper PoE ports and fiber port two associated with these bottom four PoE ports. So really what we've done here is the network managers, if they're running two separate networks, like an IT network and a security network, can send both of their uh, data out to this one location here, and typically there's not going to be room out in that NEM enclosure to put multiple PoE switches. So you can send two independent networks to one PoE switch here and have that data completely separated from each other. Another nice feature that comes with the Omni Converter Rugged Net Switch is called Directed Switch Mode. And what this does is helps prevent port flooding for these multicast type networks. So what can happen out there sometimes is the video cameras are going to broadcast unnecessary data to other devices in the network, like cameras or other printers or workstations. And what, what happens when that happens is a lot of this is just going to really flood all these ports and slow down the network performance. So with directed switch mode, again, you can flip a dip switch or go through the management, it's going to send all the traffic and data from each camera just up to the fiber uplink port, which is going to go to that network video recorder. So instead of broadcasting all that unnecessary data to other cameras in the network, it's just sending the data to where it really needs to go. And it's going to really help uh, speed up the performance of the network and not get uh, bogged down by all this port flooding that can occur. So great, great feature there is the, the dual device mode and direct switch mode. Now we'll take a look at the management capabilities for Omni Converter and Rugged Net switches. So this is a web-based management, meaning you can open any internet browser, type in the IP address of our product, log in with the password, and it gives you a great real-time snapshot of what's going on within this PoE switch. So you can see the, the first two fiber ports here sending gigabit data, and then all the different copper ports associated with it too. One's sending uh, fast ethernet, 100 meg data, and it also shows you how much PoE power is being delivered from that port. And as you can see here, we have a non-PoE powered or a non-PoE uh, powered device, such as a workstation, also hooked up, just getting gigabit Ethernet data. So again, the management's a great way to do uh, remote configuration. You can set up VLANs with our, our management here. You can also override the physical dip switch settings on the product all through this remote management system. Another couple of nice features with the management is the ability to do this remote power cycling. So one way you can do that is by just clicking the power cycle button on a per port basis. So instead of having to bring all the cameras down at once if one of them freezes up, you can just cycle power to an individual device here depending on what port that they're plugged into. Another nice feature is called heartbeat signal. And so what we've done here is you can configure our PoE switches to periodically ping that powered device in between one second and 300 seconds, however frequently you want. Once our, our PoE switch senses that data or traffic is no longer being sent to the device, that it's frozen up, you can either shut that device down altogether or do a power cycle to it. So this is a great way, again, to save time and money. You don't have to have someone sitting there monitoring the network for uptime. The device will actually sense if it's frozen up and automatically restart it or just shut it down completely. Another key uh, topic or issue to take into consideration when you're selecting PoE devices is future proofing. So that can be done by selecting the Omni Converter Rugged Net Switches that support the 802.3 BT standard. So as far as future proofing goes, 
you know, in your network, as you keep adding more PoE powered devices, you know, first it might be a 15 watt PoE Wi Fi and then a, a 30 watt camera, but then a few months down the line, you need to install a 60 watt PTZ camera or a, a 75 watt small cell or even higher. So, selecting this BT switch here that supports all the way up to 100 watts per port is going to really help future proof your network. So, no matter what devices you're trying to connect and power in the future, you'll have uh, a switch that's going to support all those PoE power levels. Same with going all the way out, you know, daisy chaining out to the parking lot here. Now we're using the rugged net switch for this outdoor deployment with DC power with the ability to power up to 100 watts per port here. So we really help future-proof your network so no matter what devices you may be plugging in the future, they'll be supported. Switching gears here, we're going to go ahead and move on to the Omni extenders. So these are Omnitron's PoE extenders. They can come in two different uh, wattage levels, either a 30 watt or a 60 watt extender. These will always be unmanaged as well. They also can come with a couple different port configurations, either the two port or a three port configuration here, as well as different commercial temperature or wide temp options here. We also have what's called voltage boosting technology, which assures that there's going to be enough voltage at the end of the, this extension here in order to power your power device. We'll do a deep dive into the voltage boosting technology uh, in our webinar two weeks from now about the PoE extenders. Great thing about these PoE extenders too, lifetime warranty. So taking a look at some common applications using a PoE extender, when will this come into play? So anytime you need to, again, connect a device beyond 100 meters, you can use the Omni converter PoE extenders coming out of a 30 watt switch here. It's going to power this PoE extender with PoE. No need to have a local outlet here in order to power this device. And then from there, it's going to send PoE up to another 100 meters away to this PoE camera over this CAT5 or CAT6 cabling. Another uh, great thing you can do with PoE extenders is the drop and extend type applications. So the application we're showing here, we're running a PoE all the way up 400 meters away from this initial PoE power source with one of our 60 watt PoE switches. We, uh, by selecting the multiple port PoE extenders here, again, you can drop off PoE to a camera or Wi-Fi access point and extend out another 100 meters to the next PoE extender multiple times. So you can, again, extend PoE all the way up to 400 meters away and have a few drops along the way as well. When you're talking about daisy chaining, the maximum distance that our PoE extenders can go is up to 700 meters. So coming out of the 60 watt PoE switch, again, 100 meters to each PoE extender, these PoE extenders, they draw about five watts of power, and then there will also be some power loss over this copper cabling over distance as well. So by the end of the line here, there's still enough PoE power though in order to power up this camera and provide data to it up to 700 meters away. If there's already power available way out there at the end of the line, but you still need to connect some data to it, we can extend up to 800 meters with Ethernet only provide Ethernet con connectivity to this camera, but that again, there's going to have to be local power available to it. Now we'll take a look at the rugged net industrial PoE extenders. Same concept here as far as 30 watt or 60 watt models that are unmanaged, but again, these are just available in that ruggedized form factor with the DIN rail clip comes on the back. It also has that negative 40 to 75 temperature rating and that voltage boosting technology with a lifetime warranty. But just showing you another application here, coming out of a fiber switch to a rugged net PoE switch where it's dropping off PoE. You can use one of those PoE ports to power the rugged net industrial PoE extender. And either the two port or three port model, you can drop off PoE to a camera and then extend another 100 meters, dropping off PoE and extending that up another 100 meters to a, a powered device. The main thing to consider when you're using PoE extenders is the distance and power, as I mentioned. So over distance, that power is lost. So coming at, this is a nice chart here. It's available on our Omni extender and RugMet PoE extender data sheets. We're also on our website as well. So just depending on your PoE power source and the number of PoE extenders or hops that you want to do, as well as the distance, it'll tell you how much PoE power is actually going to be available 
at the end of the line when you're using a CAT5 or a CAT5E or CAT6 type cabling. So this is a great chart here just to ensure that you're going to have enough power out there at the end of the line in order to power your powered device. One more product I'm going to show you today is called the My Converter PoE Powered Media Converters. So these come in either the 10100 speed or the triple speed, 10 meg, 100 meg, 1 gig PoE. We call these PoEDs because they're also PDs. They're powered by PoE. They'll come with all the, the variety of fiber connector types as well as different temperature ranges. Nice part about this product too, it's got a very wide power voltage rating. So if you are just powering it with DC power, you can use anything from 8 to 60 volts DC to power it. But the great part about this is it can be powered by PoE. So a common application here is where service provider is giving you a handoff uh, at the edge of your building and you need to convert that fiber into copper in order to hook up to some of your existing routers or equipment. So again, you can power this device right into the copper port from a PoE switch, mid-span, or another omni converter switch. It's going to send power and PoE data to this media converter. So you have the fiber to copper conversion going on with the ability to power this device out here at the edge of the building where there's no local power available. Another nice application you can do with the My Converter PoEDs is sending data way out to a remote camera here over fiber and the ability to power the device right from a PoE switch. So if you already have an existing PoE switch in your network, and either you ran out of fiber ports or didn't have any to begin with, you can just power our device straight with PoE right into our copper port here, send that data out long distances over the fiber, and then using the Omni Converter PoE Media Converter, inject some power and data up to this powered device here. So again, the benefit of this, there's no need to install additional electrical outlets in your network closet keeps things nice and organized by not having all this cable clutter and just the ability to do a, a nice fiber run out of this device without having to get another expensive fiber switch and get really cost-effective PoE-powered media converter to do the job for you. So now we'll review some more application examples for power over Ethernet. The most common ones, point-to-point -point fiber. So when you're running, again, individual dedicated fiber links out to each PoE media converter or switch, and this is commonly done um, to ensure you know, that each device has its own dedicated fiber line. Another common application is called daisy chaining fiber. So this is done a great way to save fiber. So you can daisy chain when you're doing these long linear fiber runs with the multiple fiber ports. So you have fiber and data coming in and then fiber and data coming out going down to the next switch or next converter down the line. And all you can do the unlimited times until you've ran out of bandwidth from your existing switch here. So this is great for those long linear applications that I mentioned, like the railroads, uh, subways, or oil gas pipelines, or out there on the smart city where you're running fiber down the street, dropping off connectivity to some of the Wi-Fi access points and security cameras that are installed up on the street lights. Great way for saving fiber. Another common application is redundant fiber. So this is where you're running two separate fiber lines to one device. That can be done with these dual port, dual fiber ports here. So what the benefit of this is that if it's a, a mission critical application like a financial institution or healthcare where you really can't afford to lose connectivity, what they'll do is they'll run this fiber in completely different paths away from each other so that if one of these fibers is dug up or unplugged or cut, all the data switches over to the standby fiber in less than 50 milliseconds here. So it's a seamless transition. Um, so great for these critical applications where you just can't afford to lose network connectivity. And so these fibers are run in what they call geodiverse locations here. That will be the word for the day, geodiverse. So that they're, again, located far, the, far enough away from each other so that if anything happens to the first fiber, the second one will, again, pick up all the data. Another nice feature you can do is called lag or link aggregation. And this can be done with the managed Omni Converter or Regonet PoE switches. So what we're doing here is we're transporting one gig Ethernet on each of these redundant fiber links out to the switch, which is going to aggregate or enable a total of two gigs of data to all these PoE powered devices out here. So what you're doing is providing that additional bandwidth as well as a redundant fiber path for all the data to go through. Another type of uh, fiber networking that we see quite frequently is called 
spanning tree or MRP fiber rings. So if you're doing some rings, some fiber rings here, again, you can get these switches that have the multiple fiber ports to do some daisy chaining from the first switch to the next and then all the way down the line, then you can use this fiber port here to complete the ring. So this is great for you know, allowing multiple devices to be connected here. If anything happens on this fiber here where it get, gets cut, all the data was being sent this way, all the data will now be sent the other way, so you're still having connectivity to all these devices in the spanning tree and MRP type fiber rings. And then as I mentioned too, the Omni converters are great for, for the mission critical type applications. Get the one that has a dual fiber port so that you have the redundant fiber links, but then you can also set a UPS up to help power this device and provide backup power in case you do lose that main power connectivity. So now we'll do a quick summary and some key takeaways from today's presentation. So PoE extenders, great for extending PoE over copper. There's no local power needed. They're completely powered by PoE, and they can provide up to PoE plus or 30 watts power and up to one gig full uh, Ethernet. PoE media converters, the Omni converters, very compact. They come with either the one or two fiber ports and one or two copper ports, and can provide up to 100 watts per port and also one gig Ethernet data. And then our PoE switches, the Omni converter and RuggedNet. Also very compact with one or two fiber ports or copper port uplinks, as well as four or eight copper PoE ports as well. And, and as I mentioned, they can also provide up to 100 watts PoE on these four ports or uh, up to 30 watts PoE plus on the eight ports, as well as a one, full one gig of Ethernet data. And then lastly, I showed you the PoE powered media converters. Great for sending this, uh, data long distances over fiber and the ability to power the media converter straight from a PoE switch or another PoE media converter or extender. Here's a nice chart, again, just showing all the types of uh, Omnitron's PoE devices here. So our PoE fiber switches, the media converters, and the extenders. So the distance that are supported for each of these types of products. Also the amount of wattage or PoE power sourcing capabilities that you have with each product. The number of power devices that these can connect and support as well as if local power is needed. So it is needed with the PoE switches and media converters, but again, not needed with the extenders. And then also the different types of cabling that you'll use with each of these products, either fiber and copper, or with the extenders, just copper only. Another chart here just showing the bandwidth being used with each product. So our PoE switches can either uh, provide it to one or two gig. And again, that two gig is done with that link aggregation feature. And then we also have some 10 gig products coming up on the roadmap that will be uh, released very soon here that will feature some 10 gig fiber uplinks so that you can provide up to you know, one gig data coming out of each of these ports. So again, our PoE media converts can support up to gigabit data, same with our PoE extenders. All these devices really are plug and play. And then the, the PoE fiber switches do have some of that management capability and advanced switching. Again, just to summarize different ways you can connect to a PD device, you can use these Omni uh, extenders or our Rugginet PoE extenders if you're just extending copper out there. If you need some fiber to, to copper connectivity, the unmanaged Omni converter PoE media converters. Or we have our managed and unmanaged Omni converter and Rugginet PoE switches as well with more ports. So just have all the bases covered there, depending on your port counts, if you're running fiber to it or if there's local power available near this camera or not. So why choose an Omnitron PoE product? First off, they're made in the USA. You're always going to get quality, reliable products from Omnitron, made right here in California. There's no service contracts either, no extended warranties. And so, you know, all that is, just comes with the product. We're going to give you that free 24-7 tech support, uh, pre-sale as well as post-sale when you're going to install the device and the free network design assistance. And so again, we can uh, review your network diagrams and let you know if, you're, uh, if a product's going to work within your network, and then we could recommend the best, most cost-effective product for you. And then with all the different uh, operating temperature ranges, as well as fiber connection types, and the fact that we support all the PoE standards, Omnitron has a, a real wide range of PoE products uh, and portfolio there. It's a one-stop shop for all your PoE needs.
We also have no minimum order quantities and no dropship fees. So we really try to make it easy to work with us and we thrive on the support that we give our customers. That concludes today's presentation. I want to thank everyone for joining. Uh, if you'd like to sign up for some of our, our future webinars, it can be done here on the same link that you see. Uh, I know Cliff has been vigorously uh, answering live chat questions. If we weren't able to answer your question during today's presentation, we'll go ahead and follow up with an email to do so. Thanks again, Cliff, for your help today on the presentation. And thank you everyone for joining. If you have any more questions, please in, uh, email us at info at omnitron-systems.com. You can get more information about our products on our website here. And also our phone number, uh, if you have any, give us a call at any time, we can review your application for you for free. Again, I recommend the Omnitron product that best fits your needs. Cliff, thanks again for your time. And everyone, thank you for joining today. Have a great day. Be safe and look forward to, to uh, presenting PoE extenders two weeks from now on our next webinar. Take care.